So do you understand the difference? That should be, <laughs> that's the reason why Proposition 8 is not, uh, can never be legalized. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hi, we're having a very interesting discussion here on the breakfast table about uh, <coughs> law. Law, uh, the legalities of things and the uh, licitness of things. And we were trying to make a distinction between what may be legal and licit. Some things are legal but illicit. Okay? Uh, because of that, Sophia brought up the uh, question of uh, Proposition 8 about gay marriage. Uh, the attempt in California to uh, legalize gay marriage. So, and anyway, it's uh, it's interesting because because uh, that could be a good segue uh, to today's gospel. Okay? Today's gospel, and today um, we're going to we're going to hear about a very important quote that plenty of people use, and they don't realize where it comes from. Okay, and let's read it and let's try to explain it as briefly as we can because this is something very deeply philosophical that, uh, you know, in the interest of time, we'll have to try to cram the explanation here and try to get a little bit of something. Let me see. Oops. Okay, let's resume. Okay, here it is. Gospel from St. John, chapter 8, verses 31 to 42. We'll comment on the first part. Okay. We'll just comment on the first part and read the first part. Jesus said to those Jews, oh, God bless you. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him. Listen up. Jesus talking to the Jews who believed in him. If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples. And you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free okay the truth will set you free that is a quote that we hear very often right we hear that very often when people try to defend themselves especially in court speaking of court okay speaking of court when when people try to defend themselves from any allegation of uh, of wrongdoing they, they oftentimes use this defense, okay? Oh, I know I'm going to be exonerated because the truth will set me free. What do they actually mean by that when they say, the truth will set me free or the truth will set you free? Number one, they forget that it was Jesus who said that. Okay? That was not some kind of legal scholar or philosopher who... who uh, who, who invented that phrase, the truth will set you free. It was actually our Lord, Jesus himself, who said that, um, that phrase, the truth will set you free. Now, we have to understand what is the context of that phrase. What, in what context did our Lord say the truth will set you free? And what is the proper way of understanding that particular uh, sentence right there, the truth will set you free. We have to understand this in the context of other things that our Lord said. When He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, Joseph, right? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, oh, Eva Grace is hungry. Okay, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And look, if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples and you will know the truth. So what does our Lord say there? If you follow my way, because I am the way, then you will have the truth because I'm also the truth. Okay? I am the way, the truth, and the life. And if you abide by my word, if you follow me, if you are my disciple, then you will be always following the truth. You will always know what is true. You will always be part of the truth because you're part of me. And you will always be walking in truth and not in falsehood. And when you are walking and abiding by truth, you will be free. Free from what? Or free to do what? See, that's the part that many people don't understand. 
What is that freedom that they so invoke many times? Is it just free from being jailed? You see, that's their understanding of it. Oh, the truth will set me free. Free from what? Free from being incarcerated because you don't go to jail because the truth will come out that you didn't commit the crime? Is that the kind of freedom our Lord was talking about? Well, not quite. Well, yeah, it will lead to that too. If you happen to be accused of any crime that's not true, you won't go to jail if the truth surfaces, right? But that is not the fundamental uh, meaning of this quotation that our Lord says here. What are we going to be free from or what are we going to be free to do if we abide by Jesus, if we abide by the truth? Anybody? What is the real what is the real meaning of freedom here? This is what Jesus is trying to trying to teach us. What is the real meaning of freedom? What are we going to be free from and what are we going to be free to do? Huh? Before we even think of free from sin. What is the real freedom here? What are we going to be free to do? Huh? free to do good that's right we will be free to do good we will have all the freedom in the world to do what is good to do what is right to love to serve to attend to our neighbor's goods we'll be free to do anything like that that is the real freedom that jesus is talking about okay it is not freedom from jail it is not freedom from incarceration. It is not freedom from uh, whatever kind of deprivation there is. No. The fundamental freedom Jesus is talking about here is the freedom to do good. The freedom to be good. The freedom to follow Jesus all the way to heaven because he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way to the Father. He is the way to God. And we will be free with no encumbrances, with nothing to derail us, with nothing to uh, bother us from pursuing that good. And if we're always doing good, if we're free to do good, we will be doing good to our neighbors as well. Okay? That is the fundamental freedom Jesus is talking about here. Now, let's ask the question. What will be causing us not to be free what will hinder our freedom if following Jesus means being free to do good and that is the truth about us that is the truth about following Jesus what will stop that what will hinder that what will be the obstacle to doing that sin, huh? sin. sin Mia very good see Sin is what will stop that. Sin is what will give us the shackles. Sin is what's going to give us the obstacles to freedom. Because instead of freely pursuing what is good, we become enslaved to our sin. Okay? And sin is what puts us in chains sin is what puts us in bondage sin is what puts us into slavery slavery of who or what who are we slaves of or what are we slaves of if we sin the devil, the devil Shabelle, very good see we become slaves of the <laughs> devil okay when we commit sins and when we do not want to be sorry for our sins, when we don't want to uh, take sin out of our, our path and our lives, when we refuse to reform and change our ways and we wallow in our sins and we are not humble to ask forgiveness from our sins in confession and reform our lives, we are being slaves of the devil. Instead of being able to freely follow God, freely follow Jesus, and be a disciple of Jesus and do, go, do plenty of good, our sins tie us down. 
our sins put put uh, heavy loads on our souls that we cannot move we cannot do do things freely we are not free to do good because we are enslaved by our own sinfulness by our own passion okay? by our own selfishness all of those things weigh heavily on our souls see they are the ones that weigh heavily on our souls and we cannot fly and be free like a bird to soar and do plenty of good and to explore uh, 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 life the way God meant it to be for us. Okay? We become so constricted. We become, you know, we become so uh, encapsulated in ourselves, in our own bubble of selfishness. Instead of being free and breaking free from the cages of sin. And do good as much good as we want to as much good as Jesus wants us to do in the world okay? so that is the real meaning of truth setting us free okay? so every time we hear that phrase the truth shall set you free we have to ask ourselves first how do I abide by the truth See? And, and what does it mean? Very simply speaking, what does it mean when we say we have to abide by the truth? Well, for us, it would basically mean well to abide by the things that Jesus teaches us because he shows us how to go to heaven, how to go to the Father. And let's break it down. That will mean, therefore, well, obeying the commandments, you know, following the will of God, whatever it is that God has laid out for our lives to do. Uh, he has given us uh, the commandments he has given us a pathway he has given us a way of life in our catholic way of life to to follow god and for those who are not catholics well they they have their consciences also to to help them navigate life okay and hopefully they find jesus in that navigation correctly and and fall within uh the the, the call the universal calling for everybody to go to heaven okay so if we follow that path then we will be free because that path, that way that Jesus has paved for us is a way of freedom. It is a way that everybody who walks through that path enjoys the freedom that God has promised to us. The freedom to do good, the freedom to be good, the freedom to be saints, the freedom to go to heaven unencumbered by sin. That is the real freedom that Jesus is talking about. And so let's ask ourselves uh, as we prepare for Lent. Okay? And you see, Jesus died on the cross. That's what we commemorate at Lent. Okay? In order to precisely free us from that bondage of sin. To precisely remove all of those chains that, that, uh, that has since um, weighed down on humanity until the time... He, he saved mankind from sin. Okay? So our Lord opened the gates of heaven okay? and opened the cages that enslaved us, the sin, sinful cages that enslaved us and set us free okay? to go to heaven. That's what we commemorate at Lent. And so this time, He reminds us of that. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you abide by my word, if you abide by me and follow me and be my disciple, I'm going to show you the way to freedom. I'm going to show you how to be really free and follow the path that leads to life, that leads to heaven. Okay? So by following the teachings of our Lord, by following our Catholic culture, okay, our Catholic way of life, we will be in the right path. We will be abiding by the truth and we will be free. That is the guarantee that our Lord gives us through the gospel today. Now, more practically speaking, more practically speaking, there's another practical consequence of this. And that is what? Let's learn to tell the truth all the time. <laughs> Let us learn to tell the truth all the time because every lie every lie that we say is a violation of this freedom it is like telling our lord ah i don't like the freedom you offer i prefer the slavery of satan 
I prefer to be a slave to sin. Every time you tell a lie, that is what you are saying. And every time you tell a lie, okay, another chain is tied up to your soul. Okay? Another weight is tied up there. Oh, another sin. Boom. Another sin. Oh, boom. Another sin. Okay? Another lie. Here we go. Another lie. Oh, tie you down again. Okay? Every time you tell a lie, it is like being handcuffed once again and being weighed down in the slavery of satan okay so think about that that <laughs> in in telling one truth okay after so many lies well it, it does not really uh unlock everything else see it's very difficult it's very difficult because you have been weighed down with all of the lies you've been telling all your life okay it's harder to free yourself from the bondage of those lies. So the more you tell the truth, the more you avoid lying, the better for you. The easier your freedom becomes. Okay? So let's remember that. Truth will set you free. You want to be free to do good, to do all the things you want to do in the path of life? Don't tell lies. <laughs> Be very truthful. Because that is the way to abide by Jesus Christ. Okay, everybody. Bye-bye. We'll see you tomorrow again. We're off to Mass. Okay, we're in the home stretch, folks. It is the last week of uh, Lent before Holy Week. So, you know, let's uh, ramp up those, those mortifications. We are in the home stretch. Let's... Uh, try our best to really you know uh, offer those sacrifices offer those uh, acts of penance offer all of those little mortifications little annoyances of the day little discomforts it's getting warmer you know uh, let's offer those little discomforts every day little annoyances every day and little things that can that we can offer to jesus to god and say i'm offering all of these little sufferings to you to help you uh, uh, save souls. To you, we, we let us unite all of our sufferings to the to the sufferings of Jesus on the cross, which we are going to commemorate in just a few days next week. Okay? And and tell Jesus, I want to be part of that cross. I want to be part of your sufferings because this is the way I'm going to help uh, offer up uh, um, these things for the salvation of mankind and for my own salvation. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye.